Football Primetime presented by Russell Athletic. Part of tailgate week fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Sun starting to set here in Provo. Home team up a field goal with the ball to start the second quarter. Another high snap. DiLuigi on the carry this time. And DiLuigi is ridden down after a gain of four that time by Bobby Wagner and Nevin Lawson. Bobby Wagner for Utah State. Told you all the tackles. He's had number seven all time in WAC history with tackles. Came in tonight with 336 career tackles. Well, he's going to get a chance on third down here to make another play. He certainly made that play on second down. He is a player who stays on the field on third down. He's an effective blitzer, but they use him in pass coverage as well. Third and six now. Man coverage, top of the screen. Heaps with time. And he threw it out there before Jacobson made that break, and it goes incomplete as Jacobson was covered by Robertson. Well, they're getting the man coverage that they like. And they want to work against that. And I, I suspect that as we go forward, we'll see them look more to De Luigi out of the backfield when he's matched up against linebackers and safeties because right now their wideouts are not beating the corners in man coverage. So Riley Stevenson on to punt. He's had a good season so far. And a fair catch at about the 37 by Eric Motes. Who muffed two punts a week ago. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Dover. Coverage begins Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN with NASCAR Countdown presented by Napa. You know what? Tony Stewart has figured out what others haven't, which is he knows how to keep gas in his car. Back-to-back <laughs> <-to> -back <laughs> wins to start the chase. Yeah, he's, he's managing Stewart. his fuel. Other guys, you know, keep running out of gas. That doesn't work out so well. No, it's a problem. Well, here's a guy who can go pretty fast. Hit that pedal and accelerate. Robert Turbin. Play action now. Keaton. Scrambles to the near side and then lofts it downfield and it flies out of bounds. Pressure came from Kavinga on the freshman Chucky Keaton. How about the poise of Keaton? Everybody talks about it. Oh, you saw it right there. You know, didn't get rattled, didn't have a guy open downfield, and as he got flushed out of the pocket, he kept his eyes downfield trying to make a play. Offensive coordinator Dave Baldwin said he's as mature of a kid as I've been around. Now you can see it in his game. Throw up pretty quick when you open your career at Auburn. Second and ten. Pumps one way, comes back with the screen the other way to Michael Smith. And Smith is met just over the 40-yard line, taken down by Corby Eason. Well, Kyle Van Noy got there first, but Smith showed excellent balance in not getting himself taken down by this. Managed to keep his balance there. That's a great job because Kyle Van Noy had him sized up and got him around the anchors. And now you've got a third down. Do you trust the freshman quarterback to throw the ball over the middle? Third and six. Shovel pass and it works out beautifully. Williams with a big gainer down to the 40 yard line. Boy, they played that option, strung it out to the near side, and then shoveled it forward. Well, they did a great job with this. Take a look at how you're going to have this opening here, and then you have Kerwin Williams coming in there. They move everything wide open and get at it. And now they stay on the ground with Williams. And a gain of two that time. But that's okay. You know, we said it was going to be hard to run inside against those big guys up front. You know, three 300-pounders. But you have to do it every now and then to keep them honest. Those three guys inside just refuse to let you run inside. So the outside is where they'll normally run. It. Second and eight. That was Smith coming around, and that was Keaton taking a big, big hit. Spencer Hadley and Kavinga came in and found the young QB. Oh, and Hadley delivered a blow. All 230 pounds of Hadley gets in on Keaton here. 
Keaton doesn't see him. Oh. Stuck him good. Third and seven now. Turbin out of the backfield, Matt right away. He had nowhere to go. Ethan Manamaliuna was quick to get after him, as was Joe Sampson coming up from that boundary corner position to take out his legs. Well, we talked about it a couple plays ago. Do you trust the freshman quarterback to throw the ball over the middle, down the field? They didn't trust him there in that situation to put the ball out there. They're going to have to open that up. There's Dave Baldwin working with him now. He's got a live arm. Then it's a punt. Directional kick this time. And they are able to get it inside the 10 yard line. 10 7. Cougars on offense with Jay Keeps when we return. It experience is tomorrow. Notre Dame taking on Purdue, Ross Age Stadium. That experience will be in West Lafayette, Indiana. Purdue uh, lost to Rice a couple weeks ago. I'll tell you one thing Floyd's having an <laughs> incredible season for Notre Dame at that wide receiver spot. Notre Dame now has momentum after their early season struggles. See if they can keep it against Purdue tomorrow. Heaps gets the completion to Matthews. And Matthews with a 10 yard reception before he's taken down by McClinton. And clearly having Heaps throw on first down is relaxing for him. I mean, he's, he's pretty much thrown the ball effectively on the early downs, struggled on the later downs. Remember, this is a guy that came in with so much hype, true freshman, one of the top recruits in the country, played last year, and now having to get through this sophomore phase. Inside run this time by Kazeda. Gain of about two and a half. You know, sometimes it's not all on the quarterback. There are five overthrown passes. That's on him, but you know, there's sometimes you need receivers to step up and make plays. And we saw one ball thrown earlier that De Luigi had a shot out shot at it in the end zone didn't get there but Brandon Doman certainly wants the receivers to step up and make some big plays and help out the quarterback. He's the offensive coordinator up high says our receivers need to make plays for him second and seven. You go with the screen to Oppo and a good block from his fellow receiver Cody Hoffman out in front for a gain of eight before he was tackled by Lawson. Yeah I'm glad Oppo's okay. I'm just not real crazy about seeing him in the ball game. Out last week with a concussion against UCF took a big hit and then earlier tonight in the end zone took a big hit from McKay Brady who was ejected from the game. The starting strong safety for Utah State was thrown out of the game as Oppo was slow to get up but now back to action. Third and one. Devoigi needs that yard and he gets three. Show you what happened to Oppo in the course of seven days. Yeah, it takes a hit down around the goal line last Friday night. That put him out of the ball game. It was a mild concussion, did not return, missed a lot of practice. Tonight, Brady gets him with this, but he's flagged for launching, and then they kicked him out of the game. I thought it was a legitimate call for launching. But I don't think it was worth kicking him out of the game on. We've seen worse hits than that. So first down for BYU. Heaps out of the gun. They bring a little bit of pressure. Pick it up. And then out of the backfield, just crossing was Jacobson. As he snuck across that line of scrimmage for a gain of one to help out Heaps. Yeah, how about Lawson on that? I mean, that's man coverage. Chasing a guy across the field. The pass is completed. And they get a yard out of it. And you can't play man coverage no, he's, on a crossing route any better than that. He's their best corner. And of course, he'll be tested tonight by these receivers from BYU, but so far, so good for Lawson. They need something here. They got to stay out of third and long. They run on second and eight with Quezada. And Quezada out close to the 39 yard line. It'll make for a third and about three. Well, this Bowden came up with the tackle there. This is where BYU has had its issues on third down. But this should be manageable. They've got options. They've thrown the ball short on third and three, third and four, and picked it up. They've been able to run it a bit. So they ought to feel a bit more comfortable here with a third and three.
Heaps. Time on third and three, and it's incomplete. It was off the hands of McKay Jacobson, and the coverage came from Nevin Lawson, who you were just lauding moments ago. That's the wrong guy to pick on. You're getting man coverage across the board, and that guy is going to play the best man coverage of all their guys out there. And you'll see him show up in the middle of the screen from right to left. And now Utah State calls a timeout because Riley Nelson came out and lined up behind center. Riley Nelson, the backup quarterback, who converted a fourth down earlier, fourth and three, and they sent him back out there. We'll take a break. 10-7 BYU. Rod, let's explain to people what BYU does sometimes with punt formations with their backup quarterback, Riley Nelson. Well, they put him in formation where he could actually run a play. He may actually punt it, though. I can't believe they're actually going to go for it here on fourth and three. This is way too risky. Now the puncher comes out from that receiver slot to a traditional punt formation, but Nelson is out there every single time. And the punch safe is on for Utah State, so there's no return man. And it just settles in there at the 23. No, Coach Anderson pleased with the way his troops handled that. Tomorrow morning, wake up early. College game day built by the Home Depot. Nebraska and Wisconsin. So Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Desmond David Pollock, and Aaron Andrews will be in Madison. Starting your day at 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU and then 10 a.m. to noon on ESPN. What an atmosphere that is going to be for Nebraska's first Big Ten game. Keaton, plenty of time. Gets his big man Lloyd out of the backfield and Lloyd with a gain of 14. Lloyd goes 6'7", 258. Big target. Nice and easy. Hurry up offense here. Urban in the backfield with Keaton opened up the game with that 80 yard touchdown run. Misdirection this time with that fly sweep as Turbin gets out to the 43 yard line. He was tackled by Ogletree. Ogletree's having a solid evening for the Cougars defense. Yeah, the defense is having its way, but for that 80 yard run and Utah State have, has really not had a chance to get into a rhythm offensively. Got a BYU defensive lineman who's down. So we're going to take a break while they tend to the player down. ESPN's College Football Primetime brought to you by Chick fil A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Tailgate week fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. It's a beautiful day to grill here in Provo. That was Graham Rowley who was taken off the field moments ago at the end of that Robert Turbin run. Sophomore defensive end for BYU. Second and six. And Keaton overthrows it as he was trying to get it out to Eric Motes. I think we've only seen Keaton throw one ball that was vertical beyond 10 yards. And I think Dave Baldwin, the offensive coordinator, realizes that he's going to have to turn him loose sooner or later here. Only 39 yards passing for the freshman quarterback. Third and six. Moves the pocket and gets a complete cross midfield to Morrison. And Morris is very shifty, and the helmet came off that time. That was Jordan Johnson, the cornerback for BYU, came up and made contact and lost his hat. 19-yard reception for Morrison. You know, Tess, we were talking about Keaton and throwing down the field and trusting him, opening up. You see, most of his passes have been in the short area, all of them within short range. First down now, Michael Smith. And a good run by Smith to the 39-yard line before he was tackled by Mata Maliuna. Glad you're with us here in Provo. 
BYU, who got some momentum going in their season last week with that win against Central Florida after they had a disastrous evening against Utah, trying to avenge last year's upset to Utah State. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore with you. Second and five now. Empty backfield as Turbin now joins Keaton. And it was batted down right at the line of scrimmage as Van Gupo went chasing after it. Well, Van Gupo does a great job of just tossing aside the blocker and getting his hands up. He is the strongest player on the team. He can toss aside anybody. He goes 6 1, 3 30. Big third down coming up here. You see Van Gupo in there. Yeah, you got to turn him loose. You got to see if the freshman, I think he's really careful with the football. You can give him a shot here. The big back is now in motion. That's Turbin. And he threw it just behind the receiver. And it is indeed caught by Lloyd. You know, when you watch Keaton, you can tell he's really careful with the football. You can trust a quarterback like that to take some shots down the field. I mean, he's just not a guy who just throws it around haphazardly. He's very deliberate about his reads and where he's going to go with the football. So I think now in this fifth game for him, give him a little bit more rope. How about that effort by Lloyd? Yeah. Williams now. And Williams scoots ahead down to the 26 yard line. You see, they've got three backs that they can roll in there. Turbin, Smith, and Williams. Williams is probably the quickest of the three. Changes direction probably better than any, any of them. But all three of them can take it the distance. Last year against that Boise State defense, Williams had 147 yards. Second and five. Play action. Keaton just threw it a little beyond to the outside of Tia the pressure came from Jamison Frazier. How about that conversation we had with Jamison Frazier last week? We said, eh, well, you know, what do you like building your, your intensity up, intense linebacker to the game? He said, I play Angry Birds. Yeah. I play Angry <laughs> Birds before I go out in the field. I never knew it could get you that worked up. <laughs> I thought it was just a time suck. <laughs> Third five. Smith now in the backfield with the freshman Keaton. They only bring three. And yet he has to scramble and he gets it. Good individual effort by Chucky Keaton. How about the footwork? The ability to pick his way through that defense, changing direction, just a step here and a step there. Watch him pick his way through. Light on his feet, changing direction, great balance the entire time so that he can go three, four different ways to pick up the first down. And a timeout called by BYU. So young Chucky Keaton starting to find himself a bit. BYU on top for now. Utah State is threatening. They've had great success in the red zone. One of only 14 schools to enter the week having scored on every red zone trip this year 11 touchdowns and 12 attempts that is getting it done that's the way it ought to be they're the only one of those 14 with that mark Michael Smith another helmet comes loose that time <laughs> he knocked his block off <laughs> yeah. that was Travis Uwali the free safety who came up to meet Smith how about the how about the nifty move by Smith to get himself free I mean, he's caught in the backfield. Wagner has him. I mean, Sor Sorensen had him back there. But Smith threw a nice move on him. And there's big number six in the backfield with Keaton. Robert Turbin. Going to take a shot here. And he overthrew Matt Austin. Yeah, had plenty of room out there working against Johnson out there. Just threw a little bit too hard. 
needed more air to give Austin the chance to work to that back corner. Now, as a corner, you know when they throw that fade, you know they're trying to get to that back corner over there. It's a long drive for Utah State. We have first play of the game. They went for 80 yards. Now trying to earn every inch of it, third and six. They, they do like screens. And BYU is going to take a timeout. Timeout, BYU. Remember we told you earlier that Utah State is probably just a few plays away from being 3-0. How about down at Auburn to start the year? Auburn had a rally down 38-35, just over two minutes to go. Yeah, if you go up and get this onside kick, though, you don't have to worry about Michael Dyer going in for six to beat you. They had that game in their control. And then Eric Motes muffed two punts against Colorado State. And it went to overtime. They went for two, Rod. Yeah. And Turbin came up short. Yeah, they blew a 10-point lead in the last 338 of the game and then with that two-point conversion they had two shots at it had a pass interference went back the second time ran it didn't get it in most coaches won't go for it but Anderson said out yeah, we're the home team I'm being aggressive I wasn't trying to get to the next overtime so just a couple plays here or there at Auburn against Colorado State could be 3-0 for now third and six big back turbans in the slot four receivers to the right of Keaton They bring pressure. Keaton trying to escape it. And a touchdown for Utah State as he finds Eric Motes. Do you think that young man's a freshman? Wow. Are you kidding me? Wow. Keeping the play alive. Oh, we talk about extending the play. We talked about his poise. The pressure comes from the left. He feels it. He sees it, but he doesn't get rattled. He just keeps his composure, keeps his eyes down the field, and finds Motes for the touchdown. That's big time. Josh Thompson makes it a four-point margin. Take another look at the fleet feet of Chucky Keaton. Well, you're talking about a young man who shows you good footwork, but it's the poise. He didn't get rattled. He maintained his composure, had the presence of mind to look for moats down the field and not simply tuck the ball and run. That is a big time play. I think they got a lot to look forward to in the coming years up in Logan with this kid, huh? Yeah. Rest of the season, too. My goodness. 13 yard touchdown to Motes. Celebrating its seventh year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. And to date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.4 million in scholarship monies. Remember a year ago, the Utah State game was the low point for BYU. Up in Logan, they lost 31 to 16. That coach Mendenhall fired the defensive coordinator the next day. Took over the job himself. Jacob Powder with the kick here. Cody Hoffman bobbled it to start. And Hoffman grinds it out past the 25. Let's check in with Ryan Burke. Thanks, Ryan. Look forward to hearing what the guys have to say about Wisconsin and Nebraska. Quezada now, a gain of four. Should be interesting to see Russell Wilson. No, Russell Wilson second nationally in passing efficiency. Yeah, yeah. It's He's made such a difference with the Badgers. Not a surprise. We thought he'd be a good fit 
at Wisconsin. He's a high character guy and fits in with that program. Hurry up now for Heaps. And over the middle. And he looked that time for Richard Wilson. And that is incomplete. Kyle Gallagher was on top of the tight end. That's going to be some environment in Madison tomorrow. Game day there. I just want to know if Kirk, Lee, and Desmond are going to jump around. <laughs> You know CF won't jump around. Chris working away right now. Yep. Right for game day. Tomorrow morning 9 a.m. up in Madison. Going to be a spectacular atmosphere for Nebraska's first Big Ten game. Third and six now. Heaps. Big arm and he connects. Able to get it to Cody Hoffman. First catch for Hoffman tonight. Gets it out near midfield. And a third down conversion they pick up 18 here and again when you see him do this you go my goodness heaps is all the quarterback they need stands tall in the pocket no worries about pressure and delivers a strike big arm so three minutes in the half and a first down just short of midfield Korea now and he gets about two and a half yards. He was met by Bobby Wagner and Gallagher. You know, Heaps needs to string together two or three throws like that. You know, that sort of thing and a big catch to help him out, I think would get him over the hump. You know, he started one of six, since then seven of ten. But I'd like to see him string together two or three throws like that last one. And I think the confidence will really start flowing. That's Matt Reynolds down. He is their best offensive lineman. The senior left tackle only gave up a sack a year ago. A true NFL prospect. Yeah, he's four year starter at left tackle. They don't want to lose him. Our Todd McShay and Scouts Inc. have been listed as a likely third round pick. Of course, the Reynolds family has uh, been such a big part of this BYU program through the years. Dad Lance, there's Lance Reynolds over there. His older brother Dallas in the NFL with the Eagles. And his younger brother Houston, a sophomore offensive lineman with BYU. Well, there's the family tree. Father Lance, just saw him, assistant coach. Lance Jr. played BYU. There's Dallas and Matt and Houston are on the team together now. So Hanson slides over to play left tackle. Braden Hanson. Second and seven. There's a motion up front. And they get the slant complete to Falsler. And he's out to the 35 yard line, but we'll wait for the play. Well, I think they got Utah State offside. He declined that goal with the play. Falsler did a nice job of beating the man coverage. Offside defense, number 55. That penalty will be declined. The result of the play, first down. You know, false lev was in the slot and just beat the man coverage with a fake to the outside and came back inside. And they'll probably got to get man coverage again. First down for Heaps and company. Three step drop. It's going to air it downfield. And a diving effort by Cody Hoffman, but it falls incomplete as Nevin Lawson was with him every step of the way. Yeah, a really, really well thrown ball by Heaps. Though. Remember we talked earlier about how hard he was throwing the ball? Too many bullets. He put this one out there. He gave it some air and gave his receiver a chance to make the play. Hoffman couldn't pull it in. Great coverage out there by Lawson, but that is a much better throw by Heaps. Second and ten, DiLuigi, the lone back. Single coverage again. DiLuigi, nobody touched him for a good ten yards all the way down to the 20 yard line. And that left side of the line did a nice job. As they spread them out with single coverage, the block at the point of attack opens things up. You see they got on the linebackers out there, just pushing Gallagher 43 aside. That opened a big hole. And that's with Braden Hansen now playing left tackle for the injured Matt Reynolds. 
Korea on first down. And Korea, the power runner for eight yards. Remember last week against UCF, they just started feeding Korea time and time again. Well, he didn't have a lot of yards last week, but he ran with such authority that he gave the offense a boost. And get up to the line right away, second and two. This is the red zone area where they've struggled. To the end zone here. Incomplete. Oppo was the target. And Giovanni his, Robertson was covering him. I think he got his hands on it, but he couldn't hang on to it. And the last couple of throws by Heaps has been much better. Oppo gets away with a push, but that ball was on target. He just didn't come up with that. That's one of those deals where you got to have your receiver help out the quarterback. He's I don't know that, that he would have come down in the end zone, even if he caught it there. Third and two, just over a minute. Is this the Riley Nelson time? Nope, he stays in a quarterback. They do have that package with Nelson. To pass on third and two, and is batted down right at the line of scrimmage that time by Borje Fila Mayotu. Well, he had Quezada alone at the first down marker. And again, they struggle once again in the red zone. This ball gets knocked down, but they had a shot at it once again, and they couldn't come up with it. Justin Sorensen has now made six straight field goals. This from 29. And make it seven in a row. It was a good-looking drive that came up just short. But they close it to a one-point game. College football presented by Cars.com, part of Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Saturday afternoon from Cowboy Stadium, number 14, Texas A&M, taking on Arkansas. Old Southwest Conference opponents are on soon to be SEC rivals. That's right. How about the Alabama defense and the beating they put on Tyler Wilson last week? I'm anxious to see if Tyler bounces back, you know, after that tough deal he had last weekend. Well, something about these games down there at Cowboys Stadium. They've been playing there the past couple of years, and Arkansas has been handling them easily. Well, that ought to be a nice one. A couple of good quarterbacks in that ball game. Wilson and Tannehill going at it. You know, Ryan Tannehill is an amazing story if you think about how his career progressed, where he was, he takes over, and all of a sudden this is a guy that you look at and you say, hey, listen, not many guys in the country as good of an athlete as he is playing quarterback, and he plays the position very well. And you go, and we played him in wide receiver for That's what right. reason? <laughs> he was sitting around as a wide receiver. The Aggies moved him to quarterback, and he's been a star ever since. Williams and Harris. And this is Williams on the return. And he breaks a tackle, and he gets out close to the 30-yard line. Tackled by Mike Hay. Our opening play this evening, Robert Turbin got to the edge and said goodbye. Got a couple of nice blocks on the edge, including one by his backfield mate Smith. That set him loose to the edge, 80-yard touchdown run. If, if you were late tuning in, you missed it. You didn't have to be late by much. Since then, only 11 yards. As Keaton takes a knee, they will be content to just go to the break with a one-point lead. And they've been playing with their in-state rivals toe-to-toe -to -toe the past couple years. It's been a long time since they've come down here and came away with a win, 1978. Yeah, you mentioned yesterday you thought that the gap had closed between these two programs. I think that's, that's clear. And I think Gary Anderson has made such strides in trying to recruit and really modeling a lot of what they're doing the way BYU does it, of you know, going after the kids, of establishing an LDS mission program and recruiting the Polynesian players and seeing when you can get out of the state of Utah. And then you get guys like that, Robert Turbin, and that makes for a happy Gary Anderson. 14-13, Utah State up a point on the road. Now, let's join Ryan Burr back in the studio for the Dell Halftime Report. Thank you.